What's going on, y'all? Day two of sobriety. No weed, no alcohol. On my way to work. Late as usual. I gotta be consistent, man. You know what I mean? I don't want them to expect me on time. They know I'm gonna be late every day. And some people like being cooks. Some people like doing these type of jobs. I did, I once did. I always thought that I would always be a cook. Not no more. These places don't care about you. And they want you to dedicate your whole self to their company. <laughs> I'm not putting my job first, ever again. Super slow in here now. The Indy 500 is in town. So we've had a super easy day, I love it. We off for nine days after this. I'm over here doing dishes because that's, that's the best look. Helping the dishwasher out while you're on break. Because I hate standing around, it makes the time go slow. Still sober and it's over for y'all. I'm gonna feel weird talking loud to the camera. Just give y'all a bit. I'm off in like, I don't know, I don't know what time it is, 1.30. I'm off in about two and a half hours, I can't wait. Nine days off, I'm gonna get so much done, especially being sober. I'll see y'all in a little bit though. I think the bathroom is a universal hiding spot for any employee. <laughs> I think this is what we all do. The day is dragging by, super dragging. It's been one o'clock for three hours, man. I'm ready to go home. All right, y'all, I'm off of work now. Heading home on a bike. I was scheduled to get off at 4 p.m., which it is now. I scheduled to get off at 4, and, um, and we closed at 5 p.m. So I was scheduled to get off at 4, we closed at 5. And um, today decided to close. They decided to close an extra hour early. So I guess they thought that was supposed to mean that I was going to stay in close. Nope. <laughs> Not at all, buddy. I'm scheduled to get off at four. I'm leaving at four. I don't care what. Who say what? I clocked out. I ain't even go say bye to the owner or nothing. Because, you know, as far as I know, he, man, you can't stay till no. You already got me working past my doctor's note. Which is really an asshole move. And he told me he was doing it for me. I just want to make sure you got enough money to pay your bills. Really? What about the uh, weeks you were scheduling me for 10 hours because you didn't need me? He was worried about labor. He wasn't worried about my bills then. I'm not the dishwasher, man. Like, I like the dishwasher. That's my guy. But he's cool. He knows my family. I'm a missing folks. So there's certain things about him I don't like. But, um, at the end of the day, he's still cool. And, but, you know, he has him doing all type of shit, running around. He's a real employee. I'm done being a real employee. You gotta think different. You gotta stop thinking like an employee. A lot of people won't get this. They'll hear this and think you're crazy or whatever like that. That's why everybody be looking at Kanye West when he's like he's crazy, which he is. A lot of stuff he says makes sense. Especially when it comes to ownership. So, still haven't had anything to smoke or drink. I'm feeling kind of weak because I haven't been eating. I've been fasting. 
I might break my fast today. I kind of broke it today, honestly, if you want to count. Well, I ate a banana this morning. That was breaking my fast. I ate one banana. When I was at work, I put together a recipe for some pickled broccoli. And I tasted one of the broccoli. I'm going to break my fast. I told you, when you get like this, so many temptations come at you. People try to, you know, be working, working through the devil and don't even know it. All right, I'm home and my vacation has officially started. Day two sober, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, I'm chilling. I still haven't eaten anything either. I had to eat, well, I ate one banana. As y'all know, this is day two of me being sober and this is also day two of me dieting. The first day I did a fast, uh, nothing to eat for 24 hours. I didn't eat anything all day. It actually was longer than 24 hours because the last time I ate a meal was about um, 8 or 9 o'clock on Friday. 8 or 9 p.m. on Friday. That was the last time I ate a meal, went to bed, and started fasting the next day. So from 9 p.m. on Friday to 8 a.m. on Sunday, I did not eat. I'm not sure how many hours it is, but I think that's close to like 36 hours. Um, so, yeah, I'm dieting and um, going sober. It takes a lot of discipline. It just takes a lot of willpower. It's really what it is. It takes a lot of willpower. Tomorrow, I might break my fast just a little bit more. You know, I'm going to still try to be conservative on how I eat and, and, and eat very small meals, maybe two small meals. I told my mother, I spoke to my mother today. And this is why I just don't, you know, people, man. And she was like, well, well, how you been doing? I was like, yeah, I'll be good. And then she, I think she said, uh, are you barbecuing or anything today? And I was like, no, uh, tomorrow. And I was like, um, probably not. I was like, because I've been dieting. Her reply, oh, my gosh. That was her reply. Oh, Lord. She said something like that. Because I said I was dieting. People. I don't understand why people have such a negative act reaction when I say that I'm about to stop smoking weed, I'm about to stop drinking, I'm about to go on a diet. People have a very negative reaction. I've, all, I've noticed this since the first day I stopped smoking. Um, I went sober years ago, the first time I ever went sober. Now, if y'all don't know, I've went sober plenty of times in my life because I've always wanted to stop smoking weed because I know I'm a better man. But then I'll get lonely and get bored. Those are the two things that will make me start smoking again, loneliness and boredom. And everybody um, around me, they smoke and drink. So, you know, I don't have any friends that don't smoke and drink. I don't know anybody that doesn't smoke and drink. Um, besides my roommate. But I'll just never uh, wrap my mind around how people react to things like that, man. And when I first went sober years ago, uh, that's when I learned it. I already said it in one of my videos. Um, all my friends disappeared. They all disappeared. I stopped smoking weed and drinking and they stopped hanging around me. And they didn't start coming around me again until I started selling weed. This was like eight years ago. You know, I was young. Yeah. That was more than eight years ago, actually. It's about 10 years ago. So, yeah. That's my struggle, y'all. It's hard to... Uh, I don't hear too many people saying, Oh, good job. Keep it up. Oh, you got this. Mostly what I hear people saying is, You smoking yet? You drinking yet? I'll never understand that with people. I just, you know, that's why I'm such a missing throat. I just don't have that gene in me. I've never, I just never, I, I, I just don't have that in me, man. And that's one of the reasons why I just don't respect mankind, humans, the way they think, the way we think. I'm human too. I have my flaws too, man. But um, I'll never respect that with people. It's hard being by yourself on your journey. It's very hard. Oh, that's another thing I have to say. I was sober already. I was saving up money. I saved up like $2,000 quickly. Saved up $2,000 very quickly, actually. Um, and my roommate threw me some weed because she knew how weak I was for weed. And she saw how sober I was and she didn't like it because I was too focused and wasn't really joking around. And I was reading and I was being productive. And she didn't like it. She said she wanted me to be more fun. <laughs> so she threw some weed on me one day. And my weakness, I was weak. I smoked it. Um, I was bored and lonely one day. I'm sure that's what it was. And I smoked it, probably stressing about something, probably in a lot of pain. I just said, screw it and smoked it. And I knew that I had to keep it to myself. I couldn't tell anybody that I was smoking. 
Um, I even lied to the channel. I didn't even come clean with the channel um, until recently um, because I didn't want nobody that I knew to know because most of them people would have been trying to give you to hang out with them every day and start smoking with them. If I had to let my coworkers know that I was smoking again, they would have been trying to smoke weed with me every day and it would have been that much harder to quit. So they don't even know that I relapsed on weed. <laughs> you know what I mean? My coworkers have no idea that I started smoking weed again. But I'm back at a halt. And it's time to start uh, coming up, y'all. You know, I stayed sober for the longest I've ever stayed sober with no weed and alcohol and none of that. I want to say it was um three months, three, maybe four months. So longest, six months at the latest. So I don't think I've ever made it six months sober. So just imagine where I would be if I stayed sober for a year, two years. Probably take over the world. You know what I'm saying? If I was able to save that much money in that little time, then I know in a year's time I got I'm gonna have enough money as long as the money's coming in. Now at the time when I last went sober, I was probably bringing in like fifteen hundred every two weeks, which isn't bad. And now I'm bringing in half that, so um, I might have to get on the grind and maybe get a second job. Maybe you know I'm against working two jobs just to um, save up more money real fast and do everything else I need to do. That's an option. Still debating that. But I may not have to take that route. If I can make me a R&B mixtape and go around the city selling it, you know, chopped and screwed an R&B mixtape or you know, you have to be chopped and screwed. I don't know what it's like in y'all city, but in my city, those things are very popular. And a lot of guys that's going around selling these CDs don't even have covers. They just have market written on these CDs and they'll probably sell them for like $2 or, or 3 for 5 So I'm going to have a more professional looking mixtape with still fair prices. Um, so, you know, they're going to sell. So I might just be able to sell those mixtapes um, and that'll probably get me what I need, the income. I know a dude who used to sell mixtapes. He was a cokehead, though. He would sell mixtapes and he would make um, easily, I want to say $50, $100 a day. Just depending on the day, you know. Probably days it was more than that. Now, but all he would do was spend all the money on cocaine. Uh, so CDs is a good hustle even still in 2022. So I might work on that tonight. I don't think I'm going to work on music tonight. I still feel kind of weak and tired. And I'm thinking it's because of lack of sleep, maybe. Or maybe it's lack of food. I don't know. You know. Figured I press record, y'all. You know, still being sober right here. It's not easy either. Just working on some music right now. One of the beats I started working on. I was in the rain, talking to the pain. Salt was in the water. I was in the rain, blood on my hands, sharks was in the water. <laughs> bother, why'd you bother? Even think to take apart this part of darkness. Now you starting problems. Product from Indiana, Cosby profiling. I be working hard until my toes callous, until my soul's callous. Feel like slavery. I smoke with cotton mouth and pick some oxycotton, catching King disease. This is Akana and Pharaoh with some felonies. I'm with the prophets, staring at the Pharisees at Mount Olive, playing pocket full of stones, about to get it on. Pain when I talk, pain when it's dark So much pain, I'm ashamed Driving me insane, shit keeps on changing My thoughts, I came to make a mark I took the pain in my brain to make some art I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna go That's something new that I'm working on right now Day two It's ten o'clock And I'm still sober 